I'm Garth from Trouble Life Films here in Windsor, Ontario. And I got it pretty easy. I just have to stay home and take stick for my kids for being on the computer all the time. Jamie Waldron is my good friend. He's a butcher up in the Hamilton area. He's finding unique and interesting ways to do business, as a lot of people in food service are. I talked to him for a little bit about this and where he thinks the industry is going. At the end of this and further beyond. You hear in the news that this plant out west is closing because of COVID. Um, but I mean, it's like most people are smart enough to realize that the animals are still on the farm. This is just a matter of processing, right? Yeah. So, like, I mean, like the idea of a sh of meat shortage is not really in the card so much because, as I said, like the animals are there. How does that change things for you as an independent? I think there's opportunity for me, sure. I think that people are reevaluating their food choices and maybe looking at alternative ways to purchase meat. So this is convenient for them in a way. They get to come park in front of uh, the place that I'm working, pop their trunk. I put the meat in the back. We say hello through their vehicle and they're on their way. So like, yeah, there's opportunity yeah. there. Like I'm uh, offering a product that not everybody has access to. Do you think it's offset by the fact that just restaurants aren't? Restaurants are using meat now. Like, is that's a huge thing? Or do you see, do you think, at least from where you're sitting, do you see like a, a rise in demand or less? Oh, a rise. Like I, I had to switch poultry suppliers because while they may have dealt with a lot of restaurant clientele, um, they need those birds now to supply butcher shops and private sales. Yeah. So where the restaurants aren't taking that product, they're happy to have it to supply these other uh, sources of income that they need. So I think the buying part is interesting subject as well too, like how, how this might shift the way that people actually buy and interact with their kind of like shopping experiences. The people that have the means to do it or can invest in their own kind of infrastructure during these times, I think might see this carry over once a vaccine or some sort of like cure is, is formulated is that these home deliveries, people are gonna get pretty used to that. People are getting pretty used to being able to call up our mutual friend Vern in Kingsville and getting a pizza, a couple burgers, and some beer dropped off at their house. Yo, That's God. pretty awesome. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So <laughs> it's not bad. I'm like I'm thinking like the yeah. grocery chains of the world that that have the means to invest in refrigerated trucks like it. I don't, you know, I don't think you need to flip your business model on its head, but it's just like no. Why can't you charge you know, X amount of dollars for a delivery service. It's going to, someone's going to come and just drop it off on your front door and you leave. Like, I don't think that's such a wild proposition right now. And I think, again, let's like the, the people with the means to do that. Like, why, why not? If everything's packaged properly it, it, and if you have a good first in, first out in your own home, then yeah. it's like, you're going to have good meat and stuff. And you're probably not going to have to, like, you're probably not going to have to go out for a month and a half. Yeah. I mean, right. Yeah, like the, the, the share program at 20 pounds a share has been lasting people a couple of weeks, a couple of three weeks. And I think it's I think it sticks to that mentality, too, is that they know that they can grab it. It can go right into the freezer and they can just kind of eat their way through it. Mm -hmm. And then they'll email me again and they'll come back and they'll pick it up. And we don't have to really even have an interaction. I don't take offense to it. If you don't want to talk to me, no, pop no. your trunk. <laughs> let me know. Te text me and tell me what your car making model is. Pop your trunk and leave. I don't like yeah. I, I don't need that gratification, um, you know, out of that that face to face. It's you know, it's nice when it happens, but like I think that that's it's it's proving to be, um, you know, an interesting way to do it, and I'm a fan of it. What was the great tweet from Ice T I saw? It's like if someone owes you money, now's the time to go get it because you know they're at home. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, I love it! I love it. Well, I'll let you go, man. Thanks a lot for talking to me, man, and. Uh... I hope you're safe and well. Sounds like, sounds like you're doing all right, though. Yeah, things are okay. I hope you guys stay well, too. Um, I mean, we, we can obviously have a conversation when it's not on video and, and uh, talk about all sorts of other things. Thank you to all the farmers, truckers, and healthcare professionals that are keeping this thing going while we're all at home.